Now from here, um, because I had drawn multiple frames there, I think I have a few different frames. I've got like, there's my three frames. Then I see the shadow on all three frames. Um, as soon as I go to a frame where I didn't draw my shadow, of course I'm not going to see my shadow there yet. Um, so it really, it, it applies the effect for the entire drawing layer, uh, for each drawing layer that you have in here, plugged in. So there's a couple of other things that you could do with this. If I open up the options box of the shadow, this is where you can affect all of the different properties of the shadow. So the reason that this is a really great way of working is that you go through a process first in the beginning where you define where the shadow is. And after you've defined where the shadow is, you can define what the shadow looks like. So now, after I've drawn the shadow, I could decide that I'd like to, for example, change the color, make it a bit darker. Uh, I could change the alpha value on there because there's actually an, an alpha value that's um, de deciding how transparent the shadow is on top of that. I could uh, really change the color entirely. Like, if you're outside, it might be a bit more of a blue shadow, whereas if you're inside by the fire, it's going to be more of an a warmer shadow, like a like an orange or a red shadow, uh, maybe even a little bit yellow. Um, and so what's interesting about this as well is that if you look at um, all of the, we all of these are functions, they're all tied to functions here. And whenever you see a button like this next to one of these properties in here, that button means that you can animate that property over time. So for example, if you have something like a, you know, a character that is standing in front of a fireplace that's flickering, then you can draw the shadow just normally straight first. And then after you've drawn it, you can go in there and um, attach functions to each of these just by clicking on it once. And then you can add keyframes. So, you know, like you could affect the fact that it's going to be one color on one frame and you know if you take a look in your timeline at the bottom if you click on the plus sign it shows you all the functions and this is my favorite thing down here really I love this thing right here data view uh, I don't think a lot of people know about the data view what's nice about the data view is the data view gives you detailed information about the properties of all those effects so um, as I'm dragging on that color there, you see it's adjusting the values inside. So I could go and, and make it really dark on one frame, for example, and I could go a few frames later and I could change something. And by default, because I have my animate button turned on, when I change that property there, do you see that it's, it's actually created a keyframe automatically? And I can go in there and change something else and poof, it creates all those keyframes. But having the data view open allows you to go in there and see all of the information. If you do want to as well, you can um, you know, double click on any one of these effects and that opens up the Bezier editor. The, and the Bezier editor is how you edit the function. So you could go in there and adjust, oops, let me select that keyframe. You could adjust the value of the keyframe. You could adjust the Bezier between the, the two keyframes to affect how it moves from one keyframe to the other. And, um, and then have more detailed control over what's happening between the two. And if you think about it, the reason why this is so powerful is, let's go back to that example of the flickering fireplace. What happens if you don't do it this way? Um, if you were instead to actually go in and paint the shadow, then, if you've got to go back and, like, you paint the whole shadow in, and then you play it back, and it doesn't look good, then you have to go back and repaint the entire shadow. Whereas here, if you're controlling separately where the shadow is from how it looks, you, you just paint once. You paint the first time to define where the shadow is. And then, uh, because you're using these effects here to adjust the flicker on the shadow, if you play back and the flicker doesn't look good, then you can just go back and adjust your functions. And trust me, adjusting functions is way faster than repainting things. So that's what I wanted to do for this week. That is the first tip there. So 
how to go ahead and use the tone module. If you are, um, just to finish this up really quickly, if you are going to do both a highlight and a tone, let's just grab a highlight in here. There we go. So if you are going to do both a highlight and a tone, then you want to slip your highlight in after the tone or vice versa. So in other words, you need to have the output of one of the effects going into the right hand side of the other. So now if I want to, just for the sake of argument, um, I'll add a new drawing layer for this. You could also do it the same way I did it before with the overlay instead, instead maybe you use the underlay or one of the other subart layers. But in this case, just to show the other side of things, you could create a new drawing layer and on this drawing layer now you can go in and define where the highlight's going to be. Um, and yeah, sorry that looks really not very nice, but now if I take that drawing and I plug it into the left side of the highlight, you see how the highlight is appearing on top of where I put the highlight and the shadow is also applied where the shadow is. And um, if we look at the properties in here, it's the same kind of thing as the properties on the other one. So you can go back there and adjust certain things. And just to point out one other one that's really useful is the radius. The radius applies how sharp you want that edge to be. If it's down at zero, it's very sharp. Whereas if it's quite high, then it's very blurry. And some things like, you know, like Princess and the Frog would have a very blurry shadow. And some things like the way that they do a lot of cutout for TV will have a very sharp edge. It really just, it all depends on the style that you're going for. So let's leave it at there for this week. So that is highlights and shadows on a frame by frame animation sequence. And I'm going to pick it up next week um, and talk a little bit about um, another way of doing shadows and highlights and taking that other way and this way as well but taking both of those ways and applying those also to a cutout character. And I'll give you a couple of different ways that you can do it with a cutout character. So um, have a good week, and I'll see you next time.